So thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be in this session with these distinguished colleagues and friends and to have this, this wonderful audience. Uh, for the sake of time, maybe well, this is thing. Maybe I'll skip a bit of the introduction. We're going to talk a bit about LASIR, since not everyone is totally familiar. But let me skip, say that we're part of a broader project led by some colleagues, very distinguished colleagues who are here. Uh, within that broader project, the papers you are seeing today is going to be a set of papers of this initial launch of the initiative, on, on in this particular case, on political economy. And uh, the paper that Carlos Escartasini and I are writing with the help of two extremely bright uh, young uh, master students uh, relates a bit to the previous topic in the volumes, if you wish, which is the issues of taxation and, and redistribution, and we are doing a, a bit of the political economy of of that. There, there is a, I was going to kind of point to Daron while doing this. There is this going... Oh, I, I'm going to point to Daron while doing this. There is this dominant view of the political economy of Latin America, which is rightly dominant, which could be summarized, by the way, of some of the previous work of, of Daron and, and Jim, that argues that part of the, and, and the paper by Leopoldo and Cozos, of course, goes in that part in that direction, that part of the explanation of the high and persistent inequality in Latin America has to do with, con with concentration of power. This uh, general view, which is largely right, has a fiscal version that would say is because of the power of the rich that in the region we have low taxation and low redistribution. So in this paper, we argue that this is a good characterization for many countries in many points in time, but not a good characterization for all countries at all points in time. And to see this very quickly, we have a couple of uh, figures showing the, the size of the state in different places in the world and different places in Latin America. We see that some Latin American countries, like Brazil or Argentina, have states the size of the high-income OECD countries. We also see a high variation in social spending in Latin America. Social spending is not identical to redistribution, but it's a close uh, casting. Uh, so, what we do is, uh, in this paper, is provide a bit of a framework to look at a more general political economy approach that would allow to explain these different uh, distributive outcomes, but also it does so in a way that looks at, at a broader set of symptoms. And in particular, we want to, and again, Daron is one of the great contributors to that literature also, we want to draw another issue that is extremely important for many Latin American countries, which is the issue of populism. And we want to bring together to uh, inequality outcomes, other social outcomes of great importance and saliency in the region, such as low growth, low productivity, insufficient savings, low quality public policies. Uh, this set of additional outcomes very briefly in the schematic pseudo model I will present I will call efficiency. So the general argument is that different countries are in different political economic equilibria as the title of the session and as the leaders of the project have correctly named this part of the effort. So what we do in the paper, and I'm going to go very briefly over some of that, is we characterize, this is related to the previous part of the project, we characterize the fiscal vector of Latin American countries in a number of relevant dimensions. Then we briefly review, and we have been asked to do that, given that, that this is like a state-of-the-art volume, not just your last little contribution, to review with, uh, with some of the explanations of these uh, different syndromes, which I repeat, are not enough redistribution, as Santiago was highlighting in the, in the discussion yesterday, but also a poor quality politics and an efficient state. But, but in general, this literature, sometimes having the same authors, goes through different tracks, like some papers explain uh, inequality, literal distribution, other papers explain efficiency, of course there are some exemptions, and what, some exceptions, and what are, we are going to argue here is for a, for a framework, one particular, perhaps, um, way of a more general framework that try to explain both type of outcomes at the same time as uh, characteristics of different countries being in different political economic equilibria. 
So first part is fiscal vector. We try to <coughs> we try to characterize three things: how large is the state, how much they distribute, and how efficiently they do it. For that, um, I don't have time to explain the data now. Maybe in the Q and A, we have characterized the countries in terms of government size, in terms of government efficiency, and the height of the diagram, which is reflected here in a cutoff in two colors. The um, brown ones are low redistribution countries, the blue ones are high redistribution countries according to the commitment to equity data of Nora Lustig and, and collaborators. And we see that there are countries all over the place. The OECD rich, mostly European countries, are mostly in this area even though we don't have the distributive data in the data set, but the ones that happens to be there are all high, um, high redistribution. So there are a set of countries in the world that have large states, that they are fairly efficient, and that they distribute substan a substantial amount of resources towards the more uh, vulnerable sectors. Uh, Latin America are these countries that we color here. Um, they tend to be in the smaller size, smaller redistribution, I'm, I'm sorry, smaller size, smaller efficiency, and some variation in terms of redistribution. So, to summarize, we have different types of countries. Um, in this paper with Carlos, we, we kind of contract the tax redistribution axis versus the efficiency axis. In some other work with Nora, we are working more in this distinction here. And there are these types, country with, you know, small states, they don't do much, and the little that they do is not very good. Other countries in the other end, unfortunately, not in Latin America, where everything is, you know, blonde, happy, and successful. And then cases like Chile, which have small state but high efficiency, or like Argentina, have large states, large distribution, and very low efficiency. So, um, in one, perhaps one or two slides, a summary of the political economy of redistribution. The basic underlying model is a median voter model a la Melzer Richards. This model is a model of tax and redistribution within um, heterogeneity. Given functional assumptions, we can apply a median voter result. And we have the well-known result that more unequal income distribution will call for more redistribution. And this has been used very extensively in a very successful and important literature on democratization, expecting, as Leopoldo was saying, that after more movement towards more democratic politics, we would expect more taxation, more redistribution. As everyone in the, or most people in the room know, the results uh, are mixed. And there are various ways of extending the median voter model to try to understand why these things don't happen and why they don't happen so often. All implies extending the median voting model or raising one or another assumption. In a very simplistic way, here we summarize by sociological class some of the explanation focus on the poor and the ones about uh, preferences and perceptions that people are working on is part of that story. As it was mentioned in the two previous presentations, some relate to the middle class, and Noam has a very nice paper that, that connects to that. And then there is, which I rightly think is the dominant view, that is the one that focuses on the power of elites, where there is this uh, book by Jim and Daron that made this very cohesive argument of the process of democratization and this sort of bargainings between elites and, and, and the masses, if, if you wish. And, and the model, of course, in its basic formulation, the polity under, the, under democracy will work a la, a la Meltzer Richards, that is, will be a median voter model. Uh, but, and that's one of the nice uh, contributions of, of, of that book, they consider the situation in which the elites somehow do things in the transition, like they did in Chile or, or in different cases, that make the post-democratic game not a median voter one, but a median voter with many other political resources in hands of the, of the richer segments of the population. Uh, okay, so that's the one minute summary of uh, the elite domination explanation and other explanations of not enough redistribution in Latin America. Then, in terms of the political economy of inefficiency, I'm not going to explain all of these papers in detail, but these are some of my favorite papers in, in the field. They could be organized 
in terms of which is the main underlying distortion that lead to inefficient policies. Many uh, pieces emphasize problems of time inconsistency, imperfect information, non-cooperation, etc. I, I like very much this paper by Daron that um, uses the logic of the code theorem applied to politics and essentially it's a commitment problem. I cannot commit to do things differently in the future and that forces inefficient choices today. In some other literature, famous paper by Alberto, 1988, and other, and other follow-ups, they emphasize, we emphasize a bit, the possibility or not of cooperating over time. And when you get society to cooperate over time, you get better policies than when they do not. So, the last four minutes I have, um, a couple of sort of summary statements about a framework that perhaps could accommodate explaining the different equilibria and at the same time explain the level of redistribution and the level of efficiency. Imagine two groups, rich and poor, the rich have to make investments, and investments relate to growth, uh, and after that the political system that needs to be specified makes a decision on redistribution on the location of this output. If, as you know, in a one period model there is only one equilibrium in which the group that is dominant exposed take as much of the, as they can of the product for themselves, which leads in the initial period, in the first stage of the first of this only period, the, the, the investing, the group that has the technology to invest, they may decide not to invest because that investment will be appropriated in the second stage. Of course, there are many other uh, solutions to the repeated game, and to the repeated game we add an institutional structure where the rich and the poor do not go directly because they cannot solve perfectly their own uh, collective action problems, and they go through political representatives in a democratic reign, and these political representatives could be of different quality, could be of different types, or just in equilibrium who have different actions, some of which will relate to the level of redistribution in society, but some of that will also relate to the level of, of appropriation of resources from themselves, that is corruption, also related to the paper by Leopoldo and others, is sort of a tax in this context. So very quickly, we have different configurations of political systems, if you wish, some in which the their own effects of an elite that dominates and have a lot of de facto power um, beyond the de jure will be cases where the rich are very powerful. There will be cases, let's say just three, although in the model this is continuous, in which there is more of a balance of power of representation of different groups, and other cases in which in the political democratic game, as not surprising, the, the representatives of the poor that are a majority tend to be the, the dominant political party, and then you can have different degrees of agency problem. <laughs> this type of model can generate very, very different types of equilibria. For brevity and for convenience for myself, I will focus on those that I like the most. Under some parameter configurations, you will have cooperation. And cooperation in this model implies that the rich invest optimally. And then there is a reasonable degree of redistribution of that high output. And the, the non-cooperative uh, equilibria come in different formats. For instance, one will be the rich are very powerful, and at the same time, they really dominate the, the state, and there are no agents that steal from them, etc. So it's like the, they are the owners of the country. They will invest as much as this is convenient for them, but there will be little redistribution. And to go to their corner, you can have situations in which the the government in power is a government that represents the interests of the poor and attempts to redistribute, uh, but they, does so, they do so in a way that is fairly inefficient, and for both reasons, in an ex-ante manner, the, um, um, the rich will not invest or invest very little, depending on the details of a continuous or, or discrete model. And this type of political configuration and this type of outcomes would be naturally associated with elite domination, the sort of standard historical case of Latin America, uh, with some variations here. And this will be the typical, let's say, left-wing populist, also quite common in Latin America even these days. Um, and we 
argue that this connects to some of the observations in terms of these three characteristics of the of the fiscal states. And in the final part of the paper, we um, go a bit broader than this little model and connect to other issues and other relevant dimensions for Latin America that one would naturally expect in an enlarged interpretation of the model that uh, will be correlations that come in different types of equilibria. Let me show you just two for brevity. These will be countries that have large taxation large redistribution and are very efficient in Norway's of this world. And in those cases, we observe, uh, it's hard to explain here, but we, we observe low corruption, we observe high institutionalization, and we observe a uh, lot of trust among people. And in, and in other corners, where you have a small state, a little redistribution, and high, um, very inefficient, in those cases, you expect you correlate, actually not you expect, you correlate with more corruption, less institutionalization, and less trust among citizens and among themselves and with politicians. And just one final line, this looking at trust, <laughs> looking at, at Noam Ikov of Lapov, etc. many of the things there are, could be the natural micro foundations of the beliefs that sustain the different type of equilibria. So we are trying to connect the belief information to the outcomes in terms of fiscal results. And I'll stop here. Thank you very much.